Hey everyone. So let's talk about the nature of art and design. Uh, let's, let's ask the big questions. Why not start at the beginning, right? So let me see here. So let's ask the question, what is art? Uh, what does that mean to you? Stop for a second and think about it. It's a big question. And, uh, you know, usually big questions don't have simple answers. Or if they do, there are lots of simple answers. <laughs> uh, so you might stop and think about, what does it mean to you when I say, what is art? Uh, and what is design for that matter? You know, it's um, two very uh, critical things to, to stop and think about. If you are interested in either one of those things, if you call yourself an artist, if you call yourself a designer, um, what is this all about? So let's say for the sake of argument that uh, this definition will suffice for now. And, and again, your definition may vary. Uh, but let's call art the study of creative skills and their products. And now, I mean, it's a woefully inadequate description of the magic and majesty of art. But we have to start somewhere, right? And so study meaning like, it's a discipline right? It's not this frivolous thing. It's not like this cutesy, uh, oh, isn't that nice that you painted that? You know, art is, um, from the very beginnings of uh, uh, humanity, has been uh, a very highly regarded, very important part of, um, you know, our society, uh, our culture. Um, in fact, we artists define culture, right? We have more power than we think we do. Um, okay, so creative skills, uh, create, right? That's an important word. Um, and, and then we're talking about the products of that labor, right? Um, the art object. Uh, now, um, sometimes that object is more physical, uh, in some endeavors and others. Um, so again, it's a spectrum. All of this is on a range. Um, so what about design? What is that? What does that mean to you? And again, this is a very brief um, definition of design, but it's essentially to plan, uh, to organize. If you're designing something, you're piecing it together, right? Um, it's, it's that organizational structure. And, and in our case, it's visual. Um, that visual organization. Okay, so we need to talk about the function of art or design uh, and the intention of the artist or designer. So if I have an apple I should have brought an apple with me. I always forget the apple. Um, but look, look at that picture of the apple. If I have that apple and it's uh, on the counter in the kitchen, uh, is that art? Can we call that art? Um, what's the function of the apple in the kitchen? Uh, or in your lunchbox, <laughs> you know? Uh, oh. It's, it's to be eaten, right? So I, I think it'd be a stretch to call the apple sitting on the counter in the kitchen a work of art um, or the intention of the person who purchased it to make it art. Ah, but, you know, maybe. Like, what if we take that same apple, pick it up off the kitchen counter and take it over to the art gallery and put it on a pedestal? Is that art? How could an object that was food a minute ago become art? Well, happens all the time, right? Um, and again, you may be, you might have to 
pause this video for a second and think about it. Like, how does that happen? Um, it comes down to the intention of, of the maker, right? The artist, the designer. Uh, what do you intend it to be? Has a lot to do with how others will see it. And certainly how you see it as the, you know, uh, creator. All right. Uh, what about a scientific drawing? Right? Is that art? Um, you can certainly say it's been designed, but is it a work of art? Um, I would maybe argue that it's, again, it's a gray area, but um, it's not really the intention of the person who put this schematic together to, um, to like, um, uh, <laughs> Uh, reach into your soul uh, and make you think poetic thoughts. Uh, it's meant to inform, you know, and, and again, this is uh, kind of, you know, there's art out there that informs. There's art out there that looks like this. You know, again, what's the intention of the maker? That's important. It's an important question to ask. Uh, what's its function, right? Um, now, the next one, painting. I think most of us will probably agree, yeah, uh, painting is pretty much firmly, you know, in the column of art. Uh, and, you know, we could argue over the quality of this art. You know, it's kind of pretty. It has, you know, the, that soft, soft atmosphere quality. Maybe it's, you know, kind of conventionally beautiful. It doesn't really uh, set the world on fire, but uh, I think we can call it art. Um, all right, and then um, finally, what about an advertisement? Uh, is that art? Uh, again, it's it's a gray area, but you know, most of the graphic designers that I know uh, don't call themselves artists. Um, they don't see what they do as having a personal vision. They are serving a client. Um, that client has a need and the designer uh, helps them out, right? Uh, usually for money. <laughs> and, but again, like you could argue, you know, like go back to the great masters. Most of them were paid by uh, a, a benefactor or the church or, you know, uh, to make something that that benefactor wanted or that the church wanted or that, you know, there's uh, certainly, again, um, room to discuss and sometimes argue about the function of a work of art and the intention of the artist or the designer. All right. So give it some thought. Big, big ideas here. Big questions. Um. I was supposed to flip that over. We already talked about the function of each example. Um, intention of the maker of each. That's important that you stop and ask that question. What's going on here? What do they intend? What's the function of each? All right. Craftsmanship. Uh, we hear that word uh, thrown around a lot, and it's really important, especially for young artists and designers, to develop a sense of craft. Uh, that craftsmanship comes from the knowledge and handling of materials, right? And whether that's a paintbrush and tubes of paint and a palette and a canvas, or um, a, a mouse in your hand looking at a screen, uh, or a chisel and a block of marble, like your knowledge of those materials uh, and how you manipulate them, that will turn into craftsmanship. The more you work with these materials, the more you understand uh, how to get the best out of them, you're, you're going to grow in your craft, right? So, and the more you expose yourself to in terms of materials, and techniques, the better you become uh, as an artist, as a designer. So craftsmanship, very important. Um, creativity, right? Um, creative, like the word create is in creativity, right? And for some of you that may be like, 
Ah, uh, you're pulling something out of nothing, right? Or some of you may argue, no, it was already there, and I just kind of gave it form. Um, part of our talk about creativity usually will turn our attention to imagination, right? And the word image is in imagination. And I, I think if we dig far enough back into the Latin roots of it, uh, we're going to find a definition uh, like this, to form an image of something, to represent something, right? I have an image. And how we cultivate those images uh, is very important, right? Um, one thing that helps me when I'm thinking about creativity and imagination is to try to understand it from an intellectual point of view or an emotional point of view, right? Um, if we think of it as a marriage of intellect and intuition, often and, and again, you know, sometimes it's more intellect than intuition, and sometimes it's more intuition than intellect. Again, like everything else, there's a spectrum. Uh, but that idea helps me think about uh, how I form images. Does this come out of my gut or out of my head, right? Um, all right. Creativity. Critically important. And, and it reminds us, you know, uh, making art is not a, a simply a mechanical process of cobbling things together. Uh, it's, it's the life of the mind and the heart and the hand that goes into the, in, into these things, the making of these things, the expression of, uh, you know, um, our, ourselves brought into the world. Uh, it's pretty fascinating. Aesthetics. Yeah, this is, this is your $5 word, right? You're in college. You should know this. Um, aesthetics essentially is the study of beauty, right? Branch of philosophy. Um, and, you know, you've often heard beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What is beautiful for one is not necessarily for someone else. Uh, it's a matter of preference often. And, so if we look at these two images, right, the one on uh, the top is Caravaggio, the great master, and the one below is uh, Archimboldo, uh, a great painter in his own right. And if we look at them and we, you know, ask a hundred people, which one is beautiful, more than likely they're going to choose the Caravaggio up top, right? It's more conventionally beautiful. But uh, there's going to be a few of us that will gravitate towards the Archimboldo, right? Uh, it's beautiful in a different way. So, uh, like everything else that we're talking about today, there uh, is some gray area between uh, two extremes. All right, so... Oftentimes abstract or non-objective, surreal, fantasy-based work is often seen um, at, in a more subjective way, more subjectively beautiful. Uh, and oftentimes, by the majority of, of art viewers out there, there's this leaning towards realistic or illusionistic representational work, and that's often seen as in a more objectively beautiful way. But both of these pieces are, um, you know, relying on, you know, a certain level of illusion and realistic um, representation, but they're both influenced by emotion, uh, personal vision. Uh, so, again, uh, aesthetics, lots of gray area in between um, what's conventionally beautiful and what's not. Uh, again, food for thought. Archimboldo, food for thought. Eh, and the one up top. I, that was a bad pun. Okay, sorry. Um, artistic expression and style. You know, this is um, the unique character of an artist's work, especially over a, a period of time, over a range of images that they've made. That's how you develop a style. It does, it's not a one-off thing. 
um, you working with your materials and being creative um, and learning your craft, you put it all together and you have a unique way of doing things. Now, should an artist have a unique character style? Well, in the past, you really needed to, to be recognized, and that's what you would sell, it's what people wanted, and it's still true to a certain extent. Um, but more and more artists are saying no to that, and they have more of a range. And designers, typically, if you specialize, it's not a good idea, um, because your client needs you to be this some days, and it needs you to, like, they need you to be something else other days. Now, there are designers out there and illustrators out there who have developed a certain style and they are sought out for that. So, again, uh, it's not always, you know, uh, one or the other. Um, so, um, think about style and developing it and how it's developed. And um, think about your own style um, or range that you need to develop. To do what you need to do to get where you need to go. All right, the components of art. Uh, this is the nuts and bolts, right? Uh, art has a subject, it has content, it has media, and it has form. All right, so subject matter very uh, important that we uh, come up with subject matter that's the appropriate vehicle for the meaning of the work. Uh, it is kind of the vessel for meaning in our work. The content is that meaning, right? Uh, why are you doing this? The medium, the choice of the medium is so critical uh, and oftentimes style and craft are wrapped up in the medium that you choose. Incredibly important. Um, you know, work of art is nothing if not an expression of its medium. And then form, right? And um, this is how we put things together, right? Um, the, the color choices, uh, the sense of balance in the piece, uh, the organization of the, of the whole um, physical object, um, you know, um, and form is made up of the elements of art, line, shape, value, texture, color, and space. These are the building blocks. And the principles that guide the organization of those elements. Variety, harmony, balance, economy, movement, dominance, and proportion. Depending on who you ask, you know, these things can vary. Uh, um, you know, for one designer, uh, you know, they're going to leave space out and add something else. And for others, you know, the principles are, you know, described completely differently. But they're mostly along these lines, okay? And these are the ones that we're going to uh, focus on. All right, so... When a work of art um, has the elements and principles working together, that work of art is said to have formal unity, right? This is under the umbrella of form, formal unity. Um, it's just beautifully put together, right? Beautifully crafted. Uh, it's good decisions about those elements and how they're organized. Now, this is what we're shooting for, though organic unity. That's when all of it works together. Subject, content, media, form, everything is working together. The thing is said to have organic unity. Uh, it almost has a life of its own. It's just um, beautiful and thought-provoking and uh, just, uh, you know, makes a connection. Um, okay, so the subject of the word of the work, what is it? If you can describe it, um, that's the subject matter. So if we're looking at this uh, piece by Rauschenberg, we see um, the president and we see um, astronauts. 
you know, you know, we're, you know, go back to the 60s and JFK and the space race uh, and putting a man on the moon. Um, that's all, you know, kind of wrapped up here in the subject matter of this piece. Now, it may mean something more than that, but at least if we can look at it, see it, describe it, um, that's the subject matter. What is it? Um, okay. Now, you may ask, okay, well, what about an abstract, a non-objective piece, like an abstract expressionist piece? I can't recognize anything there but shapes and colors and lines. Well, sometimes shapes and colors and lines become the subject matter, right? Uh, so, again, <laughs> we can blur the lines between this and that. Okay. All right. So, if something in a work of art can be described, that's part of the subject. The subject can be a person, an object, a theme, an idea, an element of art, a process. Ways of representing subject matter, very important. Objective art represents people or things as clearly identifiable. Uh, identifiable right? Um, we can clearly see that that's JFK, right? The president. Now, subjective art derived from the mind rather than physical reality. Uh, so, you know, the more fantastic it gets, um, the more it's left up to your interpretation as to what's going on, right? So the more abstract things tend to get, the more we blur the lines between reality and the life of the mind, and so it becomes more subjective. So objective, more representational, subjective tends to be, you know, derived from the mind, not necessarily in an abstract way. The surrealists would make real-looking things, but they were, you know, not from this reality. Uh, and then, again, abstraction, uh, which is essentially the simplification or rearrangement of objects, persons, places, etc. Uh, very important concept. So the way that you present subject matter um, is an important choice. Um, and again, non-objective, meaning that you can, um, you know, turn a shape into the subject of a work of art, right? Non-objective means that it doesn't really reference reality, okay? Abstract works does typically, rep, you know, somewhat represent uh, objects in the world. Think of you know, Picasso's portraiture, uh, it's, it's a simplified version of a face, um, right? Non-objective uh, is where there is no face, right? It's just shapes, colors, um, brushwork, that sort of thing. Uh, no clearly definable um, um, representation from our world. It's non-objective. Non-representational. Okay, content. So, this is the why of the work. Why did the artist make it? Stop and think for a second. Why did Frida paint this um, portrait of herself as a deer? Well, you know, Frida had a hard life. Um, she was physically challenged. Uh, she had polio. Uh, she was in an horrible accident that left her uh, in pain for the rest of her life. And then, you know, her love life was complicated, certainly, and had its own scars. Um, so, um, Frida didn't have it easy, but she expressed it in such a beautiful, wonderful way. Um, so, you really stop for a second and look at this piece, like the arrows, uh, the branch, the fact that she's a deer, right, a hunted animal. Uh, the landscape, that stormy um, element in the distance and these uh, looming trees with the broken branch in the foreground, all sorts of um, symbolic meaning, right? The content of the work, right? Why did she paint it? Okay? That's the content, the meaning of the piece. Often, um, it, it's emotional or intellectual. Um, 
it is uh, conveyed through symbols many times, right? All right. Uh, again, these are the big ideas. The content of the work, that's the big idea of the piece. All right, and then form, right? The formal aspects of the work uh, are the how of the work. How was it made, right? The arrangement of the elements according to the principles, right? The elements, again, the building blocks, the principles are the organizational ideas uh, by which we arrange those building blocks, those elements. Uh, the overall composition of the piece, right? That's what we're dealing with here. Uh, made up of the elements and principles, like I mentioned, uh, and the medium used to create it. Very critical choices to be made. Um, like I mentioned before, the medium is a critical choice in all of this. Uh, you know, what um, vehicle are you going to choose to uh, convey this meaning in this subject matter? All right. Here are the elements of art. We'll talk about those in depth a little more later. But again, the building blocks, line, shape, value, texture, color, and space. The principles of design, variety, harmony, balance, dominance, proportion, economy, and movement, these organize those elements. Again, when the subject the content and the form all work together, the thing is said to have organic unity. It just, um, it's, it's meant to be that way. It's just, it just works, right? So how do artists develop their ideas? Well, they brainstorm, right? And that's part of the design process. We research what it is that we want to make uh, oftentimes uh, we brainstorm it, like with a mind map. We write our, our ideas down so that we can see them and understand them and organize them better. Again, remember, you're a visual thinker. You need to see it, so write it down. We sketch it. Um, little thumbnail sketches, right? Uh, of what the composition might look like. We make rough sketches. A little larger, a little more detailed. Um, you know, we come up with comps. And then critical thinking and analysis. The uh, way that you grow is to take stock of what you've done, uh, um, right? And through the critique process, that's how you get better. You describe what you see, right? That's the subject. We analyze what's in front of us, how it's made, that's the form. Then we interpret what we're seeing. We try to understand the content, the meaning of the work. Very important. All right, so the components of art. You know, if you break it down and you, and you think about it uh, in an organized way, you can start to really form ideas and opinions about how you make art, how you design things. It's so important um, that you uh, take this knowledge of, you know, these different parts of the world of art and design and critically think about each one of them and anytime you're stuck you go back to that what's going on with the subject matter uh, what formal plans have I made and is that working what does it mean why am I doing this in the first place so critically important all right so there you have it the nature of art and design uh, all right, go out there and make something beautiful and wonderful and thought-provoking. Uh, change the world with what you do. All right, I'll see you later.